cool gun tuber intro video that people fast forward through goes here. Hey guys, today we're going to shoot three of the uh, what I'd say are top uh, single port comp guns on the market. Uh, Staccato XC, the Nighthawk Custom uh, TRS Comp, and finally the uh, Atlas Gunworks Erebus. Um, each of them are, are a little bit different, each of them a little bit unique. Uh, we'll go over the pros and cons of each and uh, get to the range and shoot them. Uh, first gun I'm going to do a, a quick overview on is the Staccato XC. Uh, this is the original quote 2011. Um, excellent firearm. I did uh, send this grip in. Uh, this was a 2020 or 2021 model. I sent this grip in for the Extreme Shooters Dragon Scale grip. This was what was originally on their, their guns when they were STI, or at least one of the patterns. They had the tree bark and a few others, but uh, I prefer this, uh, this particular grip here. The uh, XC will set you back about $4,300. It does come with uh, you know an iron sight plate, the Delta Point Pro, and the RMR footprint plates out of the, out of the, out of the uh, box. Um, so that's good. It's optic ready. Uh, all of them are optic ready. You don't have to worry about trying to buy optic ready when they're all optic ready um, and come with the plates. So that's uh, in some cases saves you a couple hundred bucks. Those plates can run up at about $150 a piece nowadays. Um, comes with a lot of other uh, really nice features. You might be able to see uh, down in there. It has the toolless guide rod, um, maybe Dawson. It may be a, a staccato part specific, but does come with a toolless guide rod that uh, allows you to pull the barrel out uh, much quicker than a traditional guide rod. It doesn't have a little stubby. Single port comp, uh, again, like most, most of these guns, uh, probably something like a 4.6 inch barrel with the comp, bringing it to a traditional five inch length. Overall, uh, I think the Erebus may be the only one here that's a little bit longer. I think the comp sits out a little bit longer than, than five inches. Um, but Overall, uh, excellent firearm. It does come out of the three of these guns. It's the only one with the polymer slash plastic grip. It's also the only one with the plastic trigger. Uh, pros and cons of that, I actually don't mind their triggers. Triggers are pretty solid. Um, I don't have a problem with it, but again, it's not a, a quote premium like you would expect out of, uh, you know, four or $5,000 firearm. So racks very easily, very nicely. Um, all of the new staccatos normally have very little side to side play in the slide to frame fit. They do have some vertical play though. Um, just a touch, not a lot. I think it helps them be a little bit more reliable possibly. Um, doesn't really bother me on this gun. Some of the, the staccato peas have a little too much slop for me, but I will say they run flawlessly and I've never had an accuracy issue out of any of them. Uh, so I don't think it impacts much, but just from a uh, you know racking standpoint, it's just not quite as smooth as some of the other products. Uh, grip safety is an actual grip safety, so it is a functioning grip safety. Uh, has ambidextrous safeties, uh, which is a nice upgrade. A lot of the, the other guns don't necessarily come, a lot of high-end guns don't necessarily come with the ambi safeties. So that is uh, also something to keep in mind. It also comes with the magwell from the factory. So um, a lot of features all decked out, all of them come DLC coated barrel, DLC coated controls, uh, magwell, ambi safeties. It's, you know, fully decked out, if you will, for the uh, standard price, no add-ons or anything like that needed. Um, I'll look it up, see if they have any other grip options and stuff, but an excellent gun. I've owned this gun, uh, I, I think maybe since 2020, it's been several years I've had it. Uh, so it's, it's several years old, a couple of you know, obviously it stays around. A lot of other guns come and go. So obviously I think highly of this gun. So the uh, next gun that I'm gonna be doing a review of is the Nighthawk Custom TRS Comp. Um, this is very similar size wise uh, to the XC. It does feel a little bit heavier. It has an aluminum grip. Um, and I think just kind of not being quite as rounded in some of the areas makes it feel just a touch bigger. Uh, still a pretty manageable size. Um, so overall, this gun from the factory comes in at, I think it's $5,000. Uh, and that comes with no optic system just to get the optic cut on the slides, another 350. The plate's going to run another 150 on top of that. So you're looking at about $500. 
uh, for the optic system to add an optic. Um, you also do not get an ambi, ambidextrous safety uh, from the factory, and I had to add the magwell separately as well. So aluminum grip, uh, aluminum trigger, and uh, a lot of other uh, of the features are similar. Uh, again, single port comp has the rail on it. Um, it's very similar to the Staccato XC. The guide rod's a little bit more difficult. You actually have to, there's a little hole right there. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but there's a hole you have to drop a pin in um, and that holds it back. It's not quote, quote, toolless. You have to have a little pin or a paper clip to drop in there to, to hold the guide rod back. But um, overall, it is an excellent firearm. Uh, this one has the uh, brushed uh, finish on it, uh, battle worn or something. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but one of the things that I will say about Nighthawk is while it is more expensive, the finish upgrade is uh, number one, an option, unlike on the Staccato where there are no finish upgrades. You can get a variety of finishes, colors, and on most of them on this gun, there's no extra charge for that. So that's a uh, pretty nice uh, upgrade. You also get the aluminum grip versus polymer grip uh, from the factory. So that's a nice upgrade as well. The other thing that Nighthawk does that Staccato and even Atlas, we'll talk a little bit about Atlas, but um, thing that you can't do with Staccato is it comes exactly the way that I showed it. That's, that is it, right? With Nighthawk, if you decide that you want serrations versus these balls, if you decide you don't want a uh, rail, if you decide you know, you want a round grip, if you decide that you want a pin grip safety, if you want, you know, anything done basically, uh, you can get it done, right? You can, they, they will customize this gun. Um, if you wanted an adjustable target sight, they'll do an adjustable target sight um, without the red dot, right? So pretty much um, a lot of different options. They also offer a, a more aggressive grip now, um, but that is one thing that you get with the Nighthawk that you don't get with the other ones is you can option this gun any way that you want, any variety of options, uh, different colors. This one actually is blacked out. I think it may come with a stainless uh, stainless trigger or, or aluminum, plain aluminum trigger from the factory. So this one has the blackout option, uh, but that is a nice feature is you can customize it and get it exactly the way that you want it, um, which is something that it, you know a lot of people do care more about the looks of their gun I mean, the performance of these guns are all very similar. I've shot them a, a lot of rounds, quite frankly, so I know how they shoot. And, um, you know, the, the look of the gun may be more important to, to some people than others, uh, but this allows you to customize it. This particular gun has basically no movement in the uh, slide to frame fit. So the slide to frame fit is excellent on this firearm. I will say, that is hit and miss based on not only the builder, but the day, right? I, I've got some Nighthawks from reputable builders that are supposed to be the best at Nighthawk. Um, some of those have more slide to frame play in them than others. This particular one is really solid. <coughs> the um, blending back here, I'll, I'll clean some of the oil off. I oiled these off, uh, up before we uh, went and shoot them so they'd all, all be very evenly uh, scaled. You can see the extractor fit is excellent, very smooth, uh, really smooth on the, uh, the uh, well, extractor and ejector, so the ejector technically. Uh, but uh, the extractor and ejector are very smoothly fit. You can see that, uh, you know, pretty much the same. There's a little bit more of a gap, I would say, just on the top on kind of this ledge right here on the uh, XC, but again, the XC gets a little bit better uh, blend treatment than like a Staccato P or something like that. So, um, you know, both of those guns are really well fit for the ejector. Um, extractor has no play in either one of them. So this particular example, I'm really thrilled with. Other Nighthawks, I have not been as happy with the slide to frame fit. Um, so it's a little bit, it's one of those things when you're buying a Nighthawk, it's tough because you want to custom order it. If you can, I personally like to inspect it in the store, make sure that slide to frame fit and that the gun is finished, uh, you know, perfectly because they are one off custom guns. And so everyone is fit a little bit differently. So ensuring that is something that you'll uh, want to make sure of. Uh, again, only a, a single sided safety. Some people prefer the single sided. So some people don't like the ambi safeties on 
the other guns that come factory with them. <coughs> Nighthawk allows you to customize that as well. Get whatever you want there. And last but not least, we have the Atlas Gunworks Erebus. Um, this is uh, generally going to be the most expensive gun. I think they just raised their prices. Uh, I think before maybe this started 6,200. Now it's like 6,700. Um, if you want the DLC controls, so this is a two-tone, has a silver barrel, silver slide stop, safeties, uh, dovetail, and hammer. They have a DLC, I think it's 100 bucks more, uh, blacks out all of the options. Uh, also comes with, a, comes with a metal trigger, an aluminum trigger. So one of the things about Atlas that I do like, similar to Nighthawk, but actually a little better than Nighthawk is, their triggers, you can buy them in about three different lengths, maybe four different lengths, and curved, flat, or maybe even concave. Uh, curved and flat are obviously the most co common popular options. Uh, but that's all options that you can order uh, whenever you do it. You can also order different colors of triggers, so you can do uh, different color triggers as well. That's about the only thing that you can truly option uh, on this gun. It has no sight. Uh, traditionally, on their uh, guns, if you, if you bought a different gun, it would have a front sight, rear sight, and then you buy the op optic plate. This comes with the optic plate. You can choose that at the time of purchase as well as far as what optic plate you want. Other than that, the only other real options on this gun, I think, are the magwell. This is the tactical magwell. They have a race magwell that is significantly bigger and more beveled uh, for your race applications. Uh, it's just too big for me. I, I don't see the need for it. Uh, but in some cases, if you're doing a race gun, maybe. Um, then you have uh, these grip inserts. So again, aluminum grip module. Uh, again, the Staccato is the only one without that aluminum grip module. Uh, but it comes with aluminum grip module, and then you can see these inserts. Uh, they have a full, which is a full thickness one, and then they have this step grip where it's a, a half thickness. The idea is as you wrap your fingers around, uh, it allows for enough room for that uh, your fingers to wrap around right there without hitting that while allowing for your palm to come in and have more surface area uh, to grip up against. And so that kick out allows you to put your palm up against that kick out we can get a little bit more surface area. Same thing on this side, they sell that full one. Uh, technically this is reverse for a left-handed setup, but they sell a full one. And again, it just allows you to kind of cup your hand and it, it, it fills out the cup in your hand a little bit more uh, for a little bit more surface area. This only comes with this moderate grip texture. They sell an aggressive grip texture, but uh, traditionally uh, it's only for the 40 cal or back in the day when they sold 45s. I think this is only in nine and 40 now, um, but they sell a more aggressive grip texture as well. I don't think it's needed. This is a super soft shooting gun. You don't need more grip texture. So I agree with them on why they don't offer it uh, as an upgrade because people will buy it and then you really don't need it on a gun that has very little recoil. Um, a lot of talk, you'll see videos, a uh, variety of videos talking about the comp being more useful for hand-loaded, uh, hot ammo, plus P ammo, etc. Um, I've shot this, I've compared it to non-comp guns. Flat, it, you know, fact of the matter is the comp reduces recoil slash muzzle rise. Um, you'll hear me when I'm talking about, uh, quote, recoil, I'm generally talking about muzzle rise, how, how much the muzzle is uh, rising on these guns. It's measurable. I have a Mantis X that I'm going to mount on these guys that will literally track how much muzzle rise I get. Um, <clears throat> I assume that less, less recoil, um, you know, less muzzle rise means less recoil. In theory, that comp could be causing it to come straight back into my hand, but that's okay because it's going to stay on target better. So, so, um, you know, the Atlas guns, Every single one of them I've held, I've, I've had the opportunity to hold several of them, shoot several of them. Um, every single one of them has had probably the tightest slide frame fit. There is absolutely no slide frame fit in any of the guns that I've ever held from Atlas. Uh, that includes uh, a Titan that I own that has probably had, you know, 20 or 30,000 rounds put through it. Same thing, the smoothness of these guns is superb to anything else that I've felt. Um, <clears throat> there might be some manufacturer, custom manufacturer out there 
Uh, there's a couple dozen, quite frankly, that make race guns that, that may make a gun that's as smooth as this. Uh, but from the three of these guns, this one by far has the smoothest action. Um, and people talk about, you know, oh, the slides on ball bearings and yada, yada. I've heard people say that. Um, I'm not going to make those comparisons because I know what ball bearings feel like and it doesn't feel like ball bearings. It still feels like two pieces of metal sliding across each other. But this one is by far the absolute smoothest um, that's around. And Atlas tends to do that on all their guns. I've had an Athena, had two different Titans, um, held a couple others, and they're all super duper smooth. So that is something that you get. But like I said, outside of the four mentioned options, you can't do different coatings, you can't do different slide cuts, you can't do a variety of things that Nighthawk easily allows you to do. Now, you might be able to contact Atlas and have a gun custom built from them. Um, again, that's up for debate nowadays. You used to be able to, now I think you might be able to, but again, most of the time you're going to get a pretty standard gun that's a semi-custom because you can customize a handful of options but you can't generally do different slide cuts and different windows and no rail and things of that nature. So, excellent firearm, super smooth, smoothest of the bunch. Um, but like I said, not necessarily a full custom. And again, it costs more than the others. Uh, so you're paying a bit of a premium there. One other uh, quick mention, uh, this does have the Atlas uh, toolless guide rod. Um, works a little bit different than the, the Staccato or the Dawson, but uh, works really well, uh, but it's a little bit different functionality. <clears throat> works fine. Um, never had any issues with it, uh, so it's, it's smooth. It operates really well. I think it's their proprietary one because they, they obviously didn't want to use the uh, Dawson one. So, uh, but works well. You can, again, take this gun down very quickly with uh, you know no tools or anything like that. Take the barrel out, clean it, whatever you need to. So <clears throat> the other thing to mention on this gun that I forgot does come with the ambidextrous safeties uh, factory. You can get some options maybe there with like shielded safeties or some that aren't quite as wide or something like that. But for the most part, standard ambi safeties or what everybody's going to have on them uh, if you see them in the shop or something like that. So nothing uh, too, too spectacular there. And then it does have the pinned grip safety or dovetail back here blended very nicely uh, again all these guns have had you know good fitting dovetails but uh this one honestly you can barely feel any grooves or anything because again it doesn't have to uh to move and so it's uh really well fit and then it's pinned so it, it's non-functioning obviously but again uh for a gun like this it's it's not a carry gun you're not gonna well most people aren't going to carry it around so uh really no need to have a functioning uh dovetail in my opinion still have the the manual safeties if you want to engage a safety you still have the manual safety that works so uh the dovetail is really not needed in my opinion once again um going to be testing the staccato xc versus the nighthawk custom uh, trs comp and then against the atlas erebus uh, again going to do a full review of these guns but uh, at the range now, we're going to use the Mantis X to uh, calculate muzzle rise. I'll refer to it sometimes as recoil, but it's actually muzzle rise, how much the muzzle is rising in degrees. Uh, have a target set out at 10 yards. Uh, that's a legitimate 10 yards, not, you know, 10 feet or anything like that, like some indoor ranges do feet. It's 10 yards out here. Um, and so we're going to shoot these, all SROs. Uh, some of them may have a 1.0 MOA versus a 2.5. Uh, but one way or another, they're, they're basically equivalent guns. Uh, gonna shoot and measure, and then we'll do some feedback as well. So uh, one thing I uh, didn't call out previously in this video, the uh, TRS slide does weigh about a half ounce more, um, probably, I don't know, four to five percent more, or something like that. Uh, and I think that's because it doesn't have the slide cutouts, which is something um, I didn't really call out is that it is a smooth sided slide it looks very different without those cutouts same thing the front of the comp doesn't have the hole for the guide rod uh, makes you know the takedown ever so more complicated or more difficult a little more uh, time consuming 
and I do mean a little bit more, it's not much more difficult, uh, but it is a completely sealed unit. Front and sides are, are smooth, so it may, you know, be that it doesn't allow a lot of uh, you know dust and dirt and debris into the gun. Uh, my assumption is it's just a looks thing, but that is something that uh, I kind of noticed as I was watching this video is how much different that gun looks with the slab side or the solid side and not having the hole in the front of the gun uh, for the recoil system. So very different. Uh, I, I did not, uh, the sound on this didn't come through real, real well, obviously with the gunfire and the microphone picks it up really loud and then it, it kills all the other audio. Um, I shot 10 rounds each here fairly slowly. Um, this was probably a shot every two seconds. I was trying to be as accurate as I could with these guns. Um, I do fast shooting with them as well. Um, all of them are, are extremely fast shooting guns as well, but it, here I was going for accuracy. Um, I do have uh, some slow motion video uh, after the regular speed of all three guns where I basically just uh, smush down the, uh, the actual shots being fired and then I think it's one-fifth speed so you can actually see um, you know, the gun you know, going off, how much it rises, how it acts in my hands. I think you see, see the you know, bullet coming out or the flame coming out in a couple of uh, cases. You may even you know see the brass flying. I think I cut it. The brass probably hasn't even hit the ground by the time I cut it because it is um, you know pretty quick. So uh, just doing some audio for for this because again the audio uh, did not go over real well. But if you want to fast forward to that slow motion, I've also done recoil testing with true slow motion. Uh, this was shot in regular speed and then slowed down. But I do have, um, you know, where I've done true slow motion testing with uh, recoil springs. Same thing, I tested, you know, like a six pound all the way up to 11 pound uh, in actually all, well, two, two of the guns, the Erebus and the um, XC were the same gun. I had a single stack Firehawk, which is almost the same gun, a little shorter rail, and it's single stack versus double stack TRS comp. Uh, but I, I tested recoil springs. The factory springs are within a pound um, of best. Again, probably just your grip strength and how well you grip the gun is going to be the only major difference that you see in maybe going up or down a pound. Uh, some people say reliability. I, I tested, you know, again, six pounds all the way up to 11. Um, these guns had no issues firing uh, with any of the recoil springs. Uh, they fired flawlessly. I think with uh, some of them, maybe they didn't lock back with the like 10, 11 pound spring. They didn't want to lock back as much. So maybe the slide's not coming all the way back. Uh, but all of these guns uh, fire flawlessly. Um, I've put quite a few rounds uh, through each of them and they, they do fire flawlessly. I've never had, I don't believe, a failure in any of them. Uh, so that says something and it's, it's uh, you know, by default. Again, I would expect that out of a gun that costs $4,000 to $7,000. Um, if it doesn't run right, then it needs to go back. Um, all these manufacturers, if you have any problems, are happy to take their guns back. I think Staccato is a little bit more picky if you bought the gun used. Um, they're a little bit more picky about taking it back and doing work on it, things like that. You need to be the original owner. Um, my understanding from Nighthawk and Atlas is they will basically warranty their gun as long as it has not been modified. Um, even if you buy it used, they will warranty it. Um, I've had great luck. I, I've you know, bought new and used guns, any type of problems I've had. Uh, I haven't had any problems with them warranting them or getting them fixed, uh, running. Sometimes you have tight chambers, things like that. Uh, the great warranties on, on these things. So uh, no real concerns about uh, buying either of those used necessarily. Uh, again, you should always, you know, if it doesn't fire, you should t take that up with the seller, but uh, they do offer great warranties on from all these manufacturers. All right, let's go look at our groups down here. I may adjust the camera just a little bit. Come on, go back to the side. Yeah, guess we'll keep it in portrait mode. Um, anyway, you can uh, see we're uh, down here. I reshot the group with the Erebus because I wasn't happy with it. Um, but that is the uh, group with the XC, TRS comp. And then these two both, like I said, I didn't feel good about the way I shot this one with the Erebus, so I reshot it. And technically I had the first nine through that and then pulled the very last one. Um, 
you know, truth be told is with all of these, I, you know, it's how well I shoot, right? It's how well you grip the gun. It's how well you shoot. As far as accuracy, I don't give any of them a, a better or worse. Some days I shoot better. Some days I shoot worse. I've been, um, you know, uh, dehydrated or whatever, right? And so sometimes if I shoot the first shot, it's of the day or better than the last. So it really just depends on how I'm shooting that particular day. So, but that's kind of a semblance of, of what you can expect accuracy wise. Um, again, if you're a sharpshooter and you can put together one inch groups of 25 yards, you're gonna do better than I did here. Um, if you're new and, you know, have poor trigger control, you might be at, you know, two, two and a half inches or, well, that's probably three and a half here, but you might be uh, significantly wider, but that's uh, some some level of, uh, you know, semblance of how I did um, on these. And again, I know that I screwed that group up. These two, I felt pretty good about. Um, and then that one, and again, I shoot right-handed. The Erebus is on loan from a left-handed shooter, so it's set up with those group, grip panels left-handed, so that may make a little bit of a difference. Shooting them, they all fired all rounds. Again, the magazine locked back, but no failures to feed, no problems with any of these guns. They all shot exactly the way that you would expect them to today. So, um, you know, no issues there. Accuracy, again, all of them are as accurate as I can put together um, group-wise. So I don't, I don't think there's, quote, one's more accurate than the other. I uh, was using uh, CCI Blazer Brass uh, 115 grain ammo today. Uh, pretty standard ammo for run of the mill ammo as well. Um, so when it comes down to it, I'll tell you, I think that it's, it's really what grip module you prefer, right? And it's hard to say that because I know it's hard to get a hold of these guns. Some gun shops won't even let you hold them, uh, you know, which I understand because I don't want somebody to go into a gun shop. I don't want 500 people to touch my, my gun before I buy it at the gun shop. And so they are sometimes selective. Some gun shops are great. They're like, yeah, you're not gonna damage it, go ahead. Um, some are a little bit more resistant uh, on the higher end guns. And quite frankly, finding three of them to actually go and grip and test out, I, it's hard to find them. There's just not that many gun shops, especially, I mean, here in Alabama, there's not a single gun shop that, that's going to have all three of these guns. I think there's one guy um, maybe that might have uh, two of them and he's not a retail store. You have to buy it online. He won't let you come to his location. Can't shoot his guns, can't hold his guns, etc. cetera. So uh, with that, I would say that the Erebus is a bit longer. The nose of it tends to hang off. Um, that design profile, I'll, I'll zoom in on these real quick. I'll grab the camera and zoom in on these guys. Um, but, you know, the, the design with this nose, I personally think that the um, Artemis is a little bit better looking gun. But I also knew that this gun was going to shoot better. So, obviously, with the comp, it's going to have a little less recoil than, than just an, a weight, a barrel, or a uh, yeah, barrel weight, an island, island weight on the end of it. And so, to me, this gun's a little bit longer. It feels a little bit bigger, especially if you have the grip modules installed. Uh, it gets bulkier both with for your grip as well as having that hang off. And so, you know, not that I think anybody would necessarily carry these guns, but this one is obviously more race oriented. It's probably, you know, holster wise, it's going to have like a race holster, which I, I do have like a um, double alpha race holster or something like that. Um, but excellent quality gun, smooth as can be. Um, you know, I love the Atlas products, no problems at all. I think, um, you know, if you wanted to customize, if you, you like the look of a gun and you like specific features, Nighthawk's the way to go. You can order it exactly the way that you want. Front serrations, back serrations, color codes, you know, no rail on the bottom. Some people like the mono look or the monolithic look where it's no rail. Um, you know, like I said, you can really trick it out any way you want. Um, and then quite frankly, the XC is probably... I mean, I'm going to call it what it is. It's probably somebody who, like myself, has never spent this much money on the gun, uh, on a gun before, at least not a pistol for sure. Maybe maybe a rifle with optic or something like that. But, uh, you know, you, you're, you 
you know, have heard great things about it and you're thinking, hey, maybe I should, uh, you know, upgrade to an XE over my Staccato P or something like that. And the XE is exactly that. It is an amazing gun. It fires every time. It comes with a lot of great features. Optic ready comes with the optic plates, has the DLC barrel. Um, you know, to some extent, maybe the, uh, the uh, polymer grip actually absorbs a little bit of recoil, has a little bit more give, might be a little bit more forgiving. So, you know, call it what it is. The XE is somebody who's probably stretching their budget to get into one of these guns. Um, you know, the Nighthawk's going to be for somebody who really wants to customize it and get something that's custom. Um, no, you know, uh, comparison wise, quality wise, I don't think it or the Atlas necessarily are going to be better or worse. I will say Atlas product wise has impressed me because of their, that they produce an absolutely flawless, perfectly fit gun every time. Nighthawk, I hate to say it. I've had issues with them, their hand fitting, with them being a one-off, you know, custom gun, whatever you want to call it. I've had some fitment problems with Nighthawks. That's still going to hold me back from saying, hey, yeah, you know, the Nighthawk quality-wise is as good as the Atlas. Fact is, Atlas quality has, has surpassed Nighthawk, in my opinion. Um, if I bought a gun, I know exactly what I'm going to get. I know it's going to be 100%. I know there's not going to be any slide to frame movement. I know it's going to be fit perfectly. With Nighthawk, you know, it, it's, it's a bit of a crapshoot. But again, you get that customization aspect where you can make it your own and get the exact features you want. And that's worth something as well. And again, you know, the fitment's going to be 99% it may just have a little bit more slide to frame movement in it, uh, which I don't prefer or something of that nature um, where it, it's just not quite as, as put together as well as the Atlas. So as I was doing the video editing, uh, I noticed that the Atlas uh, V2 grip module, uh, you'll see that the frame is actually smoother. It doesn't have that step down uh, in the frame. Uh, and versus the Nighthawk and the uh, Staccato. And so between that and the, the grip and the pinned uh, beaver tail, you can see that it's just a, a much smoother transition uh, as well. And so that is something that, that's on their V2 guns as they redesign the actual lower frame as well as the grip module. And you, you can really call out that it's a, a smoother. I don't know that it, it feels a ton different, uh, but it definitely... Uh, takes away a few sharp edges and things like that. All right, hopefully you can uh, see my head now. Um, so one of the things I did not discuss with these firearms was the trigger. So I'm gonna measure them out. I've got a, uh, a trigger pull gauge, weight gauge, whatever you wanna call it. I've got one, we're gonna test them out. Uh, I don't believe I've tweaked these triggers as far as the weight of the pull. I have tweaked the uh, pre-travel and the over-travel adjustments. So um, on most of them there's tabs that you can bend out where it, the take up is less and then same thing there's a screw where it won't over-travel as much and in theory that makes you faster. I will say I think they've probably got them where they need to be and when I say that um, this Atlas is a race gun. People buy it for a race gun. They use it as a race gun. It, this particular model, they do offer two weights. They have a sub two pound and then they have a like three pound or something like that. And all the Erebuses that I've seen are the uh, sub two pound. Uh, again, it's a very light trigger and I think the people buying these guns generally want that, right? They're using them as race guns. They're using them as range toys. They're not going to carry them. They don't need a heavy trigger pull. They need it so that the gun doesn't pull whenever they actually pull the trigger, the gun doesn't move. It's, it's so light that you really would have to try to invoke any type of movement in your trigger pull. Um, that is part of the accuracy or pot potential reason why this gun may be more accurate or less accurate for a specific person. Again, a person with good trigger control, doesn't matter if you have a six pound trigger, they're gonna be able to pull it accurately every time. The Staccato XC, I think it's supposed to be about a two and a half pound pull. Uh, I find this trigger to be excellent out of the box. Again, I think it has a little bit of pre-travel that I don't like, so I dialed that out. It has uh, almost none now. Um, and then same thing with post-travel. And so I don't 
like having a lot of travel. I, I like to be able to just barely twitch and reset the trigger. Um, I will say one thing that I, I've noticed over time, you have to kind of purposely let off the trigger. If you had a heavier, like a, a three and a half, four, six pound trigger, uh, letting off the trigger, I mean, you just kind of relax your muscle and it's gonna push it out. With a sub two pound, even the two and a half pound, you have to purposely like let go of the trigger, right? It has to be a very purposeful action, not just a relax to let off it, you know, push it, it pushes it back out to the six pound pound trigger. Um, like I said, I may have actually tuned this one just a little bit to, to maybe two pounds uh, versus the two and a half. I might have, uh, whenever I replace the grip, I may have done that versus just doing the travel. Um, there was a time where I, I liked something that's a little bit lighter. Um, I will say I've handed the Erebus to some of my friends and they go and, and just naturally as they're thinking about like doing the first stage of travel like they normally would, the gun goes off kind of unexpected before they were expecting it. Again, shot or two, they're used to it, etc. but having a sub two pound trigger is not for everyone. It can create maybe a dangerous situation. Um, again, it shouldn't because muzzle awareness, so on and so forth, but um, certainly in a carry situation, I, I would probably wouldn't get the sub two pound trigger for carry situation. There are times where if the gun's bumped or even uh, follow through, if you have a, a slide that you know slams home, the, the hammer can follow it home. Um, so personally, I think those are right for their market. The Atlas is somebody that has already owned a bunch of, of guns. They, they're, they are prepared for the light trigger. They've raced, they've modified their triggers in the past. They want that super crisp, clean, sub two pound break. And obviously when we talk about 1911 triggers are really good. These are all exceptionally clean breaking triggers, right? None of them have slop. None of them have like, you know, double take ups where you like, you know, creep, I guess trigger creep would be the right way of saying it, where, it, you know, you pull and it kind of creeps out. Uh, these are all going to be right on point, crisp trigger breaks. It's just a matter of, again, that pre-travel and, and the weight of the pull, all very, very good triggers. Um, but again, the Atlas, probably somebody that's bought a bunch of high-end guns and have had light triggers, um, and they're gonna be prepped and, and ready for that trigger, and it's going to be as amazing as they ever expected it to be. Uh, Staccato, similarly, uh, mostly a range toy, I think, and so having a, a two and a half pound trigger in this gun, um, probably right for the market. Uh, again, a lot of guys I see went from a, you know, they bought a Staccato P and they saw this at the store and, you know, they thought, man, if I could just, you know, have a little money, more money. And then they finally, you know, save up enough money where they could go trade in their P, put some cash with it and buy this. And so um, the two and a half pound trigger isn't so light that it surprises people. It's light, it's crisp, it's great for range toy. Uh, it's okay for carry, I guess. It's a little light for, for what I would want out of a carry gun, but uh, it's okay. Um, and similarly, I would say that uh, most people are gonna be extremely happy with this trigger. It's a, it's a great trigger. Uh, it gets a lighter trigger than the P. Uh, it actually, I think that they polish and tune the, uh, the internals or the ignition parts for this. And so it is a great gun in that aspect. Um, when we come over to the Nighthawk, Again, I think they put the perfect trigger for their target audience. Uh, the trigger, the way it comes, is a little heavy for me. It generally comes in at like three and a half pounds. I'll measure this one. It's not overly heavy, but it's also not overly light. Um, I don't remember tuning this trigger. I might have, I did add the magwell when I pulled everything apart, put the magwell on, and I probably didn't pull everything apart. I think this is the way it came. And so Nighthawk aims for about a three and a half pound trigger pull. Um, I will say that when we talk about Nighthawk, again, generally they're a little bit older crowd. They're the people who have owned a lot of guns and they have really come to decide exactly what they want out of a gun. They custom order it, they wait their you know, 12 to 18 months. It comes in beautifully finished, just the way they want. It's not even gonna be really shot that much. I hate to say that, but truth of the matter is, these are heirloom guns. They're, they're guns that people keep for, uh, you know, forever, right? I mean, they're people's forever guns, right? They're retirement gifts to themselves. They're a variety of things. 
and that's great. And so what I would say is most of that audience really likes a three and a half pound trigger. They feel safe around it. They think a sub two pound trigger is unsafe. They feel like it could go off with, uh, you know, barely touching it. And so I think most Nighthawk people that buy Nighthawks are going to appreciate the three and a half pound trigger that they put in this gun. For me, it's a touch heavy. It's noticeably heavier than the Atlas um, by default. And so it's not necessarily my personal preferred trigger, but it is a crisp, clean break. The ignition parts are good. If you do a little bit of tu tuning to the sear uh, spring, then you're good to go. Like it doesn't require a lot of work to get it lighter. Uh, there are other guns like my Prodigy. The, the factory ignition pieces are so bad that you either have to really work them over or you do what I did and you just buy a ignition kit because the parts just have too much metal on them, they have the wrong angles, and it yields a inconsistent six and a half, seven pound pull, and it's terrible. These internals are exceptional. Again, no creep, no overtrack, you know, not a, not a ton of any problems. It just, again, they put a little more pressure on that sear spring because the audience that they're selling to don't like super light triggers because they may carry them or they don't like the concept of a gun quote going off when they just barely hit it with their finger. Again, keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. Um, but we will measure these guys real quick. Somewhere over here is this fancy gauge that I have. Um, I probably won't do five pulls or whatever I'm supposed to do to average these things out. I'll probably do one or two. Um, we will start with the Staccato XC. And it broke at two pounds, 14 ounces. We'll give that one more shot from the other side. And two pounds, 15 ounces. <coughs> so again, um, I think it's supposed to be a two and a half pound trigger. I'm getting closer to three. Um, you know, like I said, 214, 215. So now we'll try the, uh, the Atlas, uh, Erebus, and reset my counter here. And that broke at about one and a half. It read 110, but I think I was uh, still putting pressure on it. So we'll try it from the other side as well. And that time I got 112. So you're somewhere, you know, again, sub two pounds, maybe a pound and a half, pound and three quarters, but super light. Uh, I personally really like the Atlas trigger. I think they do a great job. Probably takes them more time to tune that trigger. Getting a safe trigger, which it is an extremely safe trigger. I've never had a problem with one. Uh, I've had some others where, again, the slide, you know, slams home and it, it follows that back and discharges the gun. Uh, again, when somebody that didn't know what they were doing was trying to make a sub two pound trigger, um, that can happen. And so finally we have the, uh, the Nighthawk Custom here. And again, I don't think I did anything to this gun yet. Apparently I did because it's registering just over two pounds. Uh, that was two, two pounds, six ounces. Um, and two, eight. Uh, so apparently I did tune this whenever I put the magwell on. I, I kind of questioned if I did, and apparently I did tune this down to about a two and a half pound trigger pull, which is um, kind of my preferred trigger pull, quite frankly. Uh, again, the Staccato should be, I think, at about two and a half. It, it was a little heavier than that. Maybe because of the grip module, um, you know, may have the, the sear spring sitting a little differently. But I do think they're all exceptional triggers, the way that they break, the internal parts, very smooth, very refined, very polished. Um, again, the spring that provides pressure on the trigger is effectively the only, only major difference, I think, between these guns. Again, maybe the Atlas has a little bit more work done to those internal parts to get that sub two pound because it is fairly difficult to get a, a pound and a half trigger as reliable as they have. Um, so, you know, in general, I, I would say that, you know, my favorite is obviously the Atlas. Um, I think the Staccato is an excellent factory trigger for what it is. And then, like I said, the Nighthawk, it's too heavy. 
my personal preference, it, it's, it's too heavy. You can see I tuned it out. Apparently, I, apparently I, I did take the time to actually lessen the weight on that um, and down to about two and a half pounds. But again, I think for their audience, I understand why they make it, you know, three and a half to four pounds, or I think that's what they advertise is three and a half to four pounds. Um, <clears throat> and so I do understand why they do that. So for good measure, I, uh, I have another Nighthawk here. Uh, just came in the other day and <clears throat> I haven't done anything to this one. And so we'll measure it real quick uh, just to confirm what a factory Nighthawk would normally come at. And that was three pounds, 11 ounces. Um, and we'll do it one more time on this side over here. Um, same thing, this trigger has a fair amount of pre-travel to it, uh, more than I would like. And this side, it was three pounds, 15 ounces. Um, and again, I, I do probably on all of these guns, I have adjusted the pre-travel and I'll, I'll see if we can see this, right? Um, but there's just a ton of travel uh, in this. In fact, you can, if we cock it, you can actually see, I mean, there's that much pre-travel from the factory uh, with this gun versus if you look at this, and again, I, I tuned this out, so this is not the way it came from Atlas, but you can see that is the extent of the pre-travel. Uh, same thing with post-travel. I will tune those. Uh, I have to believe, yeah, same thing on the TRS comp. Um, it's got a little bit more travel to it than the uh, the Atlas, but I'll tell you, I, I probably have tuned that um, <clears throat> out as well. And yeah, that is actually bent out uh, quite a bit. So you can, uh, whenever I look at the, the trigger, it's, it's bent out quite a bit. And then same thing here, um, you know, just a touch bit of, uh, pre-travel, not too much, but nothing like the factory Nighthawk's going to have. Um, all those guns, again, I've, I've tuned the pre-travel out. I do want some pre-travel. I do want a little bit of, of pre-travel, and the reason for that is when you release that trigger, you, you want to be able to release it to have that clean reset. And if you have almost no over-travel or, or pre-travel, when you release it, it tends to bind up and not want to reset quite as cleanly. And so you do need a, a bit of pre-travel, not a lot, not, not a ton, but just a little bit. And so you can see I've, I've actually probably tuned pre-travel and uh, over-travel on all of these guns, except for the new Nighthawk that uh, just came in, which is a president. Uh... So I uh, thought I'd do one kind of last review, uh, maybe a couple of things actually. Uh, on the trilogy here. Um, anyway, so uh, I thought I'd, I'd weigh the slides. I took the guns down to clean them. So they're all, you know, field stripped, not, not fully taken down or anything, but they are field stripped right here. I uh, thought I would weigh the slides. I've never actually weighed the slides. Uh, that is with the SRO and the plate on, just like they would sit. Uh, that's the reciprocating mass that's going to reciprocate. A um, couple of things that I did note uh, earlier that I'll kind of reiterate on. The uh, TRS comp, the Nighthawk, is slightly more difficult to pull down. And, and I say slightly, this is nitpicky, but um, it doesn't have the opening in the end of the comp. You can see that the, the, uh, where, the, uh, where the guide rod is doesn't poke through. And so you have to actually lower the barrel, push the entire thing out the front uh, to be able to drop it. And uh, versus with the other designs here, uh, even this, uh, e even the XC has a hole through the front, and so you can just easily push that uh, recoil rod through. So, as it's in the slide here, and to show you, it's it's pretty easy. I'm doing it one-handed, but um, when it's in the slide like this, right on the XC here. I can just push that and then push the button, lock it in, right? We'll, we'll try to do it. I've got to have a hand and a half apparently. Um, and you can see it, it has a nice wedge that comes out, has a lip, so you can't just bump it or anything. And then you can simply uh, pull this, uh, the guide rod out with the, with the recoil spring, right? Fairly straightforward, nothing super complicated about it. 
with the um, with the Nighthawk, uh, you actually have to push the barrel down, right? Because it, it, the locking lugs lock it. So you have to push the barrel down, slide the whole thing forward, and then between here and there, wedge, you know, wedge this pin in that I was talking about earlier. There's my pin. Uh, put the pin in, and then push everything back to pull the uh, the guide rod out. So a little bit more difficult, not much more difficult, but if we're gonna nitpick on things, uh, that is a little less uh, slick system. Uh, same thing, Atlas has the same thing as the uh, Staccato, really slick. Um, it does have a little lip, it's a little harder to see, but there is like a, a little lip uh, right there. And this actually has a little little uh, stick out that, that locks into that lip so you can't just quote bump it and have it fly off or anything like that. It's It basically has a lip so it can't uh, come in. So um, other things I've noticed, uh, the, I've had a, uh, the Athena with the DLC coating, uh, the, the DLC coating on the barrel stood up extremely well. Uh, the DLC coating on the, uh, Staccato has held up extremely well. You can see a couple of little shiny spots right there. And I think there's a, maybe a little bit up there by the comp right on those corners, but it's held up extremely well. Um, again, those are DLC coatings versus the blackout option on the um, Nighthawk. You can see it just has a lot more wear. It, it looks a little worse, which I'm okay with. It kind of matches the, uh, this, uh, the, the frame, um, which has a beautiful coating on it. Uh, but it, it's probably not a DLC. It's probably like a Cerakote or something that doesn't hold up as well. Uh, and so you can just see a lot more uh, silver shiny spots on it, etc. cetera. Uh, like I said, I really like the coating. I don't know how well that picks up, but it's a, uh, uh, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's a, um, you know, worn in finish. Uh, and so I really like the finish on this gun. Sorry for the oil spots. My hands have a little bit of grease on them. Anyway, uh, so, uh, you know, again, just nitpicky little things. If you're really looking to compare them, uh, the guide rod systems in the Staccato and the Atlas are a little bit easier to operate. Again, not like we're, you know, I, I clean my guns regularly, but it, it's not a huge deal even to take the Nighthawk down. Uh, I still prefer that guide rod over traditional little stubby with a, you know, non-bull barrel uh, set up with the bushing holding, um, anyway, the uh, plug in. And so, uh, anyway, so that's, uh, you know, just for whatever it's worth, uh, there's that. Again, I don't think the uh, finish on, the black finish on the barrel is quite as good, and I like these recoil systems a little better. So once again, I want to briefly touch on coatings. Uh, you can notice that the Atlas here doesn't really have a lot of wear on the rails. Uh, I'm going to say the Staccato has the most rounds through it, and you can see that the rails right here um, still very clean. There's a little bit of wear here, there. That's actually oil where I didn't wipe it off, but, um, overall really clean rails that the coatings haven't come off versus on the Nighthawk. You can see where the coatings, uh, have come off of the actual rails there. Not a huge deal. I actually prefer it to come off. It's eventually going to wear off anyway. And so, uh, my opinion is, is that it should be fit, uh, where that's rubbed off. They may actually purposely take it off. Uh, in the case of this gun specifically, if there was much coating. It may not have gone back together because it is a extremely tight fit. Uh, but in general, I find that the Nighthawk coatings, uh, tend to be a little bit weaker and come off a little bit better, a little bit quicker. Uh, again, you know, I haven't had any problems with the coatings, but, uh, just, you know, for whatever it's worth, the Staccato seems to be holding up extremely well, as well as the Atlas. Again, both of those have, I think, DLC coatings and hold up extremely well. So I haven't definitively answered which gun's best. And the answer is, I believe them to all basically be the same. Uh, statistically, I shoot them very similar to one another. Uh, if you look at the muzzle rise of these compared to the muzzle rise of a non-comp gun, it's generally two to three degrees less muzzle rise. It goes from about eight and a half down to about five and a half. Uh, so, you know, roughly what, two thirds the recoil or something like that. 
Uh, they all shoot almost identical, go figure. All have like a 4.6 inch barrel with a, with a single comp on the end. Uh, all have effectively the same slide weight, go figure. They all shoot almost identically. So that leaves us with why should I buy one versus the other? And the short answer is, if you are currently owning a Staccato P, uh, then you're going to go sell your Staccato P and you're going to buy an XC. Uh, we see this almost every day, right? I mean, this is the standard upgrade path. Uh, you decide that you want to buy a better gun. You don't want to drop five, six, seven thousand dollars You want to drop, you know, $4,000, uh, something like that with the plate. So this is your upgrade path. Uh, now, Oddly enough, you can see there's actually a Springfield box right here. This is a Springfield Prodigy. Uh, you're going to want to go sell your Staccato P to the guy that owns that Prodigy right now. Uh, that is, you know, how you're going to recruit half the funds to uh, pay pay for your XE. Um, your next buyer is going to be the guy that's getting into fast shooting. Uh, probably a, a younger guy, uh, maybe in his late 20s, early 30s. Uh, has a good job and has uh, enough money that he can go buy the fast toy gun for going out and competing and showing that he is the best shooter in the world. That is going to be your Atlas. Uh, nothing wrong with that. It's a fabulous gun. It is the fastest shooting gun uh, out of the bunch of them. It's the flattest and the fastest. My uh, recovery time was also the quickest with it. And again, it's not exactly set up perfectly for me at this exact moment. <coughs> so, um, that's your Atlas fire, right? Uh, you're somebody that's competing, that's getting into rapid shooting, that uh, wants uh, you, you know the fastest gun out there, the biggest, baddest one. That's going to be the guy for you. Um, and then, of course, finally, uh, if you're over the age of 40 and you are looking to build the gun exactly the way you want it, uh, buy that heirloom piece that is you know going to be uh, in your in your safe. Uh, displayed forever. You're going to buy the Nighthawk. Uh, you're going to love it. You're probably going to look at it more than you do shoot it. Uh, and that's okay too. Uh, it is a great shooting gun. Uh, it's also okay to simply display it on your mantle. That's an okay thing too. Um, and so beautiful gun, you can customize it, etc. And so the answer lies not in which gun is better. The answer lies in what are you looking for out of a gun? And I just described your average buyer for each one of these. All right, uh, if I don't use the other video clip, uh, on the Mantis X, the uh, flattest shooting gun was the Erebus at uh, average muzzle rise of 5.31 over both grip uh, types. Both grip types really didn't make a difference uh, today, so I just averaged them out. Um, the XC was the next at a 5.75 degree muzzle rise. And then the TRS comp, which was a little surprising to me, came in at 6.39 degrees. That compares to an average of a five inch, um, 2011 like these, uh, without a comp normally comes in at about eight, eight and a half for me. And so it has probably two thirds the recoil of a traditional, uh, five inch barrel. The Erebus was also the fastest uh, recovery time per the Mantis at 0 0.70. The XC was at 0.77 and the Nighthawk Custom came in at 0.81. And so once again, just like muzzle rise, go figure less muzzle rise means uh, better recovery time. You're ready for your next shot faster. Thanks for watching the video. Um, not a professional uh, gun tuber. I am not, uh, you know, sponsored by anybody. Uh, just happen to have these guns and have been meaning to do a review and uh, took them out to the range the other day and figured I'd film while I was doing it. Um, oddly enough, I, I've got a lot more footage than I expected, took a lot more time than I expected. Um, but uh, appreciate everybody watching and hopefully uh, if you're looking at these guns, you uh, learn something uh, about each of them.